Hi guys, my name's Jess and this is my vlog presentation for ASS330 Cyborg Anthropology. Uh, in the short amount of time I have with you, I wanted to look at two streams of thought that have been running through my head uh, ever since I read a couple pieces of writing. So that was Donna Haraway's Cyborg Manifesto and Gregory Shrimp's Ancient Mythology of Modern Science. So while on the surface, they might seem to not have a lot to do with each other, uh, apart from being assigned readings for my class. For some reason, my mind connected them in a really strange way. Um, and that was in the form of the cinematic Marvel Universe and the Avengers. Um, so, films about a team of superheroes and their extraordinary abilities to save the world multiple times over might not be the most obvious connection. But if you take a quick look at Haraway's theory of the cyborg, post-human, a futuristic age of man and technology, Captain America and Iron Man do stand out. And if you consider Shrimp's discourse on mythology existing as the basis of and through modern science writing, and then the search for meaning through understanding our universe, Thor makes his way onto our team of marvels. So what I wanted to look at was the fascinating ways these can be discussed in relation to the Avengers. So anthropology is the study of human and culture, right? And while developments in technology have been changing our world for centuries, the recent advances have resulted in what we study changing dramatically before our very eyes. Uh, the meaning of a human being and what we are in relation to animals, technology and the planet is rapidly transforming. So while the basic stance of Donna Haraway's essay, and bear with me on this long sentence, is discussing the cyborg as a symbol of feminism with which to reject the attempts a defining human identity based on nature. It is indispensable when wanting to briefly jump into the foray of post-human discussion. So Haraway sees our world in transmutation with the rise of the cyborg, a combination of machine and organism. Every manifestation of human culture really is directed to the remodeling of human organism. So the character of Steve Rogers jumps to mind. And he's a small skinny man in 1940s America, rejected from the army to be able to join World War II because of his size. So he was selected because of his personality by a special scientist team, and he's given a dose of a super soldier serum, and he doubles in size, speed, and strength. In Thwiat Bates' book, The Cyborg Selves, she says, Post-human has become a way of naming the unknown possible future identity of human beings as we incorporate various technologies into our lives and into ourselves. So as such, Steve Rogers becomes a genetically altered being, a superhuman, and becomes the figure of Captain America. Perhaps even more readily apparent is the figure of Iron Man or Tony Stark. So he's literally a cyborg, a combination of man and machine. Basically, when a visit to Afghanistan goes wrong, Stark ends up with a battery keeping his heart pumping and all the shrapnel away from it in his body. Ah, this turns into what's known in the films as something called the arc reactor, and it's actually used as the energy source for the Iron Man suit later on as well. So in having an artificial part functioning within the organism, not only internally, but as a source of power externally, Stark is the prime example of Haraway's cyborg. And while people may roll their eyes at the storyline of the film, or even worse, not quite get where I'm going, consider this. Not only does science fiction, which is literally the premise of the Avengers films if you take away the fantastical side of things, not only does science fiction operate as a form of modern myth in our technological culture, but myth also operates within science writing itself. Okay. So, this leads me into the rest of what I wanted to look at which is the relevance of Shrimp's book to the Marvel Universe. So by looking at various popular science writers, Shrimp argues that there are religious and mythological roots in all science, and that science turns out to have storylines every bit as compelling as those in myths. Science shares characteristics such as heroizing, prophesizing, speculation, and moral essence. And for me, this is where Thor is a person that exists primarily in myth is worth taking a quick look at. So in the strategy often used by scientists, a familiar icon is drawn from the realm of fantasy into the real world to explain something. In this case, I think there's a couple ways to understand Thor's position in the films. 
Uh, one, if we quickly look at the myth of the human acquisition of fire, one of the world's most widespread stories, and bear with me on this little trip, it makes sense, I promise. It tells us how humans, and I quote, gained a tool that allowed us a certain freedom to expand and design life as we would have it. So technology has allowed us to expand and design the human as we would have it in the form of Iron Man and Captain America. And the design we've chosen is equivalent to that of the son of a god in size, speed and strength. Sit on that. The other thing is, we could also understand his presence as the reflection that no matter how technologically advanced we become, no matter how much we've rejected mythology as the product of a primitive mind, these beliefs are never fully released and it continues to be alluded to in all sorts of contexts in a Marvel film. Okay, so film not only reflects the beliefs of a culture, but it can also act as a starting point for further debate and discussion on what those beliefs actually are. And I'd like to think that you could watch The Avengers now, just with Haraway and Shrimp's perspectives running through your mind. Um, the point of the vlog was not for you to immediately make the same links I did, um, or necessarily agree with them. But what I wanted to do was explore two very strains of, two very different strains of thinking, that are extremely relevant to the way we will study and understand anthropology going forward. So that's the idea of the cyborg post-human in breaching boundaries between organism and machine is actually challenging the way a human being is considered. And while myth may have been thought to have given way to science, to have been left behind behind the enlightenment and given way to the development of technology, especially futuristic, it is ever present in the way we tell a story or is a deeper layer to the foundation of our understanding of the cosmos. And our pop culture movies in terms of the Marvel Universe and the Avengers actually reflects that on a really clear level. Thanks.